Welcome to lesson two. In this lesson, we are going to learn breaking distance times. This next lesson, as well as lesson three, will look at different aspects of driving and data that we can collect from driving. In this one, we're going to calculate reaction time and distance, as well as calculate the total stopping distance. Here are some interesting charts on reaction time. If you'll notice this first chart, this is in time of males in purple versus females in yellow. And you can see that on the bottom we have age and that on the y-axis here we have time. So as we get older our reaction time definitely decreases. But you can see that females reaction time is much slower than males. I thought that was interesting. And then here's another chart too that looks at breaking distance and thinking distance. Thinking distance is in red and breaking distance is in blue. Um, down here on the bottom, on the x-axis, we have the speed of the per hour, and on the y-axis, we have the distance traveled, and this is in meters. Um, and you can see that anytime you stop, it's going to be a combination of how long it takes you to think to stop, as well as how long it actually takes your car to stop. And you can, the faster you go, the combination of those two really increases, especially the braking distance of the car, the faster you go. So just something to keep in mind. Let's look at reaction time. This is the average, the time that the average alert driver takes from approximately three quarters of a second and a half seconds to switch from the gas pedal to the brake pedal. This is called the reaction time or the thinking time. You have to actually tell your brain to move your foot to the brake and stop the car. During the reaction time, the car travels a greater distance than most people realize. And that distance is called the reaction distance. So the time that it takes you to move your foot from the gas to the brake, you're moving, and that is the reaction distance. Finally, we have braking distance. The distance the car travels while braking to a complete stop is the braking distance. So once you put your foot on that brake, your car doesn't stop instantly. It takes a little while to slow down. Those are a couple things that we're going to be considering here in our examples. Let's start off by taking a look at some facts. We know that there's 5,280 feet in a mile. A car that travels 55 miles per hour will obviously then cover 55 miles in one hour. A car traveling 55 miles per hour will cover 55 times 5,280 feet or 290,400 feet in one hour, so we've converted the 55 miles in an hour to feet per hour. Now let's convert it into seconds to see how many feet we travel per second. So we divide that number by 60 to get how many feet we travel in one minute, and then we divide that answer by another 60 to get how many feet we would travel in one second. And that's approximately 81 feet. So if you're driving 55 miles per hour, you're, gonna, you're going to travel about 81 feet in one second. Now let's look at some examples. What is the reaction distance for a car traveling approximately 55 miles per hour? The reaction distance is the approximate distance covered and the time it takes an average driver to switch from the gas to the brake pedal, as we just discussed. So we're looking for how long it takes. Well, there has been some research done on this, and the research has found that drivers take anywhere from 0.75 seconds, or 3 fourths of a second, to one and a half seconds to react. So what we want to do is then find the reaction distance for a car traveling approximately 55 miles per hour. We're going to find the range. So we're going to first let x equal the distance traveled when the reaction time is three quarters of a second. And then we're going to let x equal the distance traveled when the reaction time is one and a half seconds. The easiest way to solve this is to use proportional reasoning. reasoning. Okay, so let's think about this. We're looking for distance traveled. Well, how far do we travel in one second when we go 55 miles per hour? We just figured that out on the previous page, so let's go back. When we travel 55, 55 miles per hour, we traveled about 81 feet, we'll go ahead and round, in one second. So if we go 55 miles per hour, we travel 81 feet. So let's create a ratio with that. 
So we have 81 feet, and that is in a total of one second. So in 81 feet, we travel one second. And I'm going to set that to another ratio. I want them to be proportional. So I want to know how many feet, we'll call that x, we are going to travel in three quarters of a second, or 0.75 seconds. Now if you remember how to solve these ratios, when we have an equal sign, we can cross multiply. So, we would take x times one second and get just one x, and then we would take 81 times 0.75, and that would give us 60.75. So that means it takes, or we travel, I should say, 60.75 feet if our reaction time is 0.75 seconds or 3 quarters of a second. Let's now compare that if our reaction time was a little bit slower. Let's say it was one and a half seconds. So again, we're going to use 81 feet because that's what we calculated for a car going 55 miles per hour. So 81 feet in one second is how far that car travels. And we want to know how far then that car is going to travel in not one second, but one and a half seconds. Again, let's go ahead and cross multiply. So x times 1, we would just write that as 1x. And then 81 times 1.5, if we put that in our calculator, we end up with 121.5 feet. So almost double, but that makes sense because our reaction time is double. So our car is going to travel double the distance. And this is just for the reaction time. We have yet to apply the break. So this calculation helps us to find our reaction distance based on a certain reaction time and how many feet we travel per second. Now let's look at the braking distance for a car that's traveling 48 miles per hour. So in this case, I just only want to look at how long it's going to take once my foot is on the brake for the car to slow down if I'm traveling 48 miles per hour. Well, here's a general equation that helps us to understand that. So the general formula for the braking distance where s represents the speed of the car, is going to be s squared divided by 20. Well, the speed of the car is 48, so we would square that, and then divide by 20, and that will tell us how long, or not how long, I should say how many feet it would take for the car to come to a complete stop. Well, 48 squared, which is just 48 times 48, comes to 2,304, if you put that in your calculator, and then if we divide by 20, we get 115.2 feet. So that's how many feet it takes for the car to actually stop once you started applying the brake. This is called the braking distance. So make sure you have that in your notes as compared to our previous example back here, which was the reaction distance. So first you have a reaction, your car travels, and then you apply the brake, and you have a braking distance. Okay, let's go ahead and put everything we just learned together into one problem. Rachel is driving at 48 miles per hour on a one-lane highway. She sees an accident directly ahead of her, about 200 feet away. Will she be able to stop in time? Well, we need to know how long her reaction time is. So remember, it's anywhere from 0.75 seconds to about 1.5. That's what the research tells us. So in this one, we're just going to assume one second is her reaction time. We're just going to split the difference. Now remember, the total stopping distance from the moment a driver realizes the need to stop to the time that the car is no longer moving is going to be the sum of the reaction distance plus the braking distance right here, total stopping distance. So we have to calculate both. Okay, well first things first. We need to know if a car is going 48 miles per hour, how many feet does it travel per second? Remember this example back here when we went through if a car is traveling 55 miles per hour? 
So we now need to do that if we're traveling 48 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and solve this piece by piece. If we're going 48 miles per hour, we would multiply it by 5,280 feet to figure out how many feet we are going per hour. If I put this in my calculator, I would get 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 0 oh, feet per hour. So I've just converted miles to feet. So remember this number, 5,280. It's very important. All right. Now we need to know, this is how many feet we travel per hour, but how many feet do we travel per second? Well, we need to divide by 60 minutes, there's 60 minutes in an hour, to figure out how many feet we travel per minute. If we do that, we get 4,224 feet per minute now. And then we need to do one more division. We need to divide again by 60 because there are 60 seconds per minute. And if we do one more division by 60, our final answer is 70.4 feet per second. So that's how far that car travels every second. So that's really important information to be able to solve this problem. Okay, so I've gone ahead and shrunk that up so that that's over on the side. And now what I need to calculate is my reaction distance and my braking distance. I'm going to use this 70.4 to help me determine my reaction distance. So remember that we use proportions. We're going to use ratios. Well, if I travel 70.4 feet in one second, how far am I going to travel with a reaction time of one second. So I will put a one down here. Depending upon my reaction time, if my reaction time was one and a half seconds, I would put 1.5 here instead of just one. If my reaction time was 0.75, then I would put 0.75 here. But this is just one second. Now we need to cross multiply. So x times one second is just one x. And I don't need to worry about the units when I'm cross multiplying. And then 7.4 times 1 is obviously going to be the same number. So 70.4 feet is how far I'm going to travel in my reaction time. So while I'm thinking about putting my foot on the brake, my car is going to travel 70.4 feet. Let's go ahead and move on to braking distance now. Well, remember that braking distance, we need to use that formula of S squared divided by 20. Well, how fast is my car going? My car in this situation is going 48 miles per hour. So we did already do a calculation with 48. But remember, it's 48 squared divided by 20. And we came up with, I believe it was 115.2 feet. We take 48 squared, and then we divide by 20. So that's my braking distance. OK, we're almost there to find my total stopping distance, all I need to do is add my reaction time of 70.4 feet plus how long it takes my car to stop, 15.2 feet, to come up with 185.6 feet. So when I start to notice that the, there's an accident 200 feet away, if I start to brake, I will stop the car just in time right before I get to the accident. In fact, just short of 15 feet from the accident, 185.6 feet. Sometimes it helps me to picture how far this distance is by thinking it in terms of a track, something that you run around, and or maybe even a football field, the whole length of the football field. So if I think that there's about three feet in every yard, this is about 60 yards, so, you know, this is a little over halfway down a football field, or just shy, a little over halfway for about a 100 meter or 100, 110 yard sprint or something. So this is quite some time. Okay, this concludes our lesson on reaction and braking distances.
So hopefully you understand the connection between how long it takes you to stop and how long it takes you to react as well as how long it takes your car to stop depending upon how fast it goes. Make sure you have these in your notes and make sure you have them in, in your notes step by step so that you know how to calculate these.